Ladies and gents, I'm Rusi G Reaction and this is 536 AD, worst year in history by the channel Kings and Generals. That's what people constantly tell me to react to Kings and Generals, I'm like what the hell, let's start with this. Yeah, 536 AD, I think this is the Justinian Plague. You know, I react to uh, lots of, you know, Justinian videos from Doe Hattie and others too, you know, so I know this is Justinian Plague. So yeah. Was so yeah, I guess because of the bubonic plague, Justinian plague. Uh, this that's why this is the worst year in history, I think. Yeah, so, yeah I mean bubonic plague is just effed up. It kills third of the population every time, which surprised me because I thought it was just Black Death was like that. But no, even in this Justinian plague, third of the population died. So this is effed up. It's gonna be fun reacting to this. Remember, people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe to our know which type, which type of videos to react to more, which type of channels to react to more, and comment down if you want me to react to any videos from this channel or any other. And check out the cast for the different playlists, uh, like you know, uh, you know, the history playlist, internet historian, all this sarcastic production, uh, CGP Grey, and yeah, let's do this one. Mark Twain once asserted that history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes, and so historians constantly attempt to draw parallels between events of modernity and those that have already- <laughs> I love that quote, man. History may not repeat itself, but it rhymes. Damn. And so, yeah, constantly attempt to draw parallels between events of modernity and those that have already gone by. In this vein, we turn to the ancient world and cast our gaze back to one of the many years that rival 2020 in its dubiously notorious status in the human imagination. When the year 536 AD began, just short of one and a half millennia ago, the Eurasian civilizations that often serve as the subject of our videos were undergoing a seismic change. As war, politics and other human regularities continued apace, a number of debated cataclysms occurred which according to some scholars, made 536 the worst year in all of history. Sometimes a certain source is not translated into English, but thankfully the sponsor of this video is right there to help you learn more than 10 languages. Our authors use Babbel to improve their knowledge of Russian, Turkish and Spanish, which allowed us to gain valuable perspectives from the sources in these languages. Learning a new language is instrumental in earning more money professionally, in communicating with family and loved ones, it's essential for travelers and for building human connections. It's also great for self-improvement and mental health, as being bilingual improves cognitive functions and memory. Babbel teaches using real-life situations and is a proven method of grasping a new language in three weeks via fun classes that last 10 to 15 minutes. Lessons are created by 150 real language teachers, not a machine or computer, which makes them lively and effective. It's a full learning ecosystem where you can decide how you want to learn, be it podcasts, interactive games, and much more. And it works. Studies have shown that 15 hours of Babbel is as good as a semester of college Spanish. A special Damn. offer for our viewers, buy six months of Babbel and get six months- I don't know if that's a good thing about this Babbel or is that bad thing about the college. But yeah, people, go to the, you know, uh, description with the original uh, original video page link and from there, I guess, you know, uh, support this channel and click on the Babel link there. So, yeah. Man, uh, you know, Ju Justinian Plague, that's just, that's just one of the after things at the time because this is 536 AD. So, you know, this is, uh, you know, Justin obviously, you know, the Byzantine Empire at the time. So, you know, already people are just, you know, uh, g g thinking if anything happens, it's God's wrath or something like that. When bubonic plague like that happens, and already all the, you know, wars and things are already happening. It would be so effed up, you know, just in you know, trying to take uh, the Western, Western, yeah, Western part of the Rome and everything at the time this kind of thing happens. Free. Click the link in the description for more information. Byzantine historian Procopius faithfully accompanied his generalissimo master Belisarius on the latter's conquests of both Africa and Italy during the 530s, observing the great general's achievements firsthand and then recording them for posterity. But Belisarius was awesome, seriously, all his tactics was just really awesome. In the midst of this imperial reclamation attempt, the chronicler described a phenomenon which is easy to pass off as irrelevant 
but which might just be the clue to the most important episode in late antiquity. Writing almost certainly in 536, the tenth year of Justinian's reign, the Belisarian historian stated, It came about during this year that a most dread portent took place. For the sun gave forth its light without brightness, like the moon, during this whole year, and it seemed exceedingly like the sun in eclipse, for the beams it oh, shed yeah. were not clear, nor such as it is accustomed to shed. Oh yeah, I even forgot. Did I react to some video like this or I just saw a video, I don't remember. But yeah, there was also a volcanic eruption at the time, which actually literally darkens uh, the area. So, you know, in the, you know, unbiased video, unbiased uh, Byzantine video, uh, in that, you know, they, they talked about how it literally got darker and I thought that he's saying it metaphorically. But no, people were actually experiencing the you know, sky getting darker because I think a volcanic eruption happened somewhere and it literally clouded the area. It's so effed up, man. A bubonic plague came at the same year this happened, the sky turned darker. I mean, you know, at this time, at 536 AD, Obviously, science is not that big of a thing, and people are, you know, basically, you know, relying on God and prayer a lot, and if this kind of thing happens. People think like this is it, you know, uh, you know, God is angry with us. We are done. And from the time when this thing happened, men were free neither from war nor pestilence nor any other thing leading to death. Armed with a scientific understanding of the world. Even we might peer up to the heavens with unease if we witnessed our sun blotted out yeah. for an entire year, as though the world had suffered through some devastating nuclear war. Yeah, we, we, would, we would piss our pants, basically, if that happens. Because if, if anything, around this, at, at this time at least, they were confusing like what's happening. Around this time, we would have some educated guesses, like maybe nuclear war has started. So it would, it would be even more frightening. Like, holy shit, it, this, is, is it on? Is it going now? Is every country just fighting nukes now? Because we are, it's like a you know, fallout game type situation then. With our own reactions in mind, we can barely comprehend how shocking this apocalyptic sun haze was for the religiously minded people of the 6th century. Yeah, God's angry, basically. It might have been seen as a herald of the end of the world, and to many, it certainly came to feel like it. Because the observations of Procopius and several other historians of this period lack any form of explanation regarding the mysterious clouds, most likely because they had absolutely no idea what was happening, the cause long remained an elusive mystery, puzzling modern historians who attempted to glean anything from the ancient sources. However, by utilizing precise modern dating techniques, such as ice core analysis and dendrochronology, the exact cause of what some scholars ominously call the 536 event can be deduced. When studying the cross-section of pine and oak tree rings within the Altai Mountains, as well as other places within the Northern Hemisphere, a trend of abnormally little growth exists beginning at the exact spot which can be cross-referenced and calibrated to represent around 536. This indicates a degree of uncharacteristic cooling, but doesn't suggest a cause by itself. To supplement this knowledge, ice cores extracted from Greenland and Antarctica dated to around 536 contain strangely large sulfate deposits, volcanic glass, and sulfuric acid content. Laboriously weaving all of this disparate data, the biblical dimming, the widespread cooling, abnormal chemical content, and more, into one coherent tapestry, most scientists combing over the 536 event ascribe responsibility to a catastrophic volcanic eruption which might have even exceeded in severity the explosion of Tambora in 1815. As an aside, it is worth noting that the latter eruption also caused visual phenomena vaguely similar to those described by our ancient sources, such as hazy but beautiful yellow skies represented in 19th century art. Several locations for this impactful volcanic eruption have been put forward everywhere from Iceland to El Salvador, but that is a detail it would- You got to be kidding me, from El Salvador to all the way there? That would be some massive volcano eruption. ...be pointless to get caught on. 
the issues of where and what are still unresolved, while some fringe researchers go as far as decrying the volcanic perspective altogether, instead pointing to certain residues in the historical record as evidence for a particularly violent comet strike. We will assume the dominant eruption theory is correct, keeping in the back of our minds the possibility of wrongness. Whatever happened, and however it happened, the results were striking in their magnitude. I mean, yeah, it could be asteroid. Asteroid have the same effect if an asteroid hits somewhere. And, you know, but, you know, there will be a record of asteroid hitting some place and making certain place, you know, people there dead or something. But it could have hit somewhere where there is no people. But it would be big enough, they would cause all the smoke to go up. I guess it could have happened, but it probably was a volcano. Fortunately, because of the convenient sulfur and trade winds carried the ashy blanket across Europe and then Asia, blocking the sun's light and causing temperatures to nosedive by an average of between 1.5 and 2.5 degrees Celsius. According to some estimations, the consequence was the worst shock to Earth's ecosystem in the last 2,000 years, and the advent of the coldest decade in 2300. It's the effect on human society was no less devastating. Crop failures and dead harvests were endemic across the entire Eurasian landmass, a fatal thing for the chieftaincies, empires and kingdoms who primarily relied on agriculture to feed their people and raise much needed taxes. In the southern part of pre-Viking Norway, for example, the entire settlement structure and social organization completely collapsed, farms were left behind, rich burials became rare, pottery production ended, and iron production decreased. I mean, we can't even start to comprehend the devastation that would make I mean, something like this, because, you know, farming is everything a civilization relies on. If something like this happens and you can't, you know, produce anything, Farming becomes, uh, you know, useless at the time. What do you do? How do you feed your people? Because same thing happened in Ireland, I guess, where, you know, some kind of a plague happened to potatoes or something and, you know, killed their crops. So they literally had to run away from that place. Go, and then they came to USA or something. I don't know. So this is something like that. How do you feed your people if you, there is no food around? the level of panic because obviously there will be no technology like we have today right now so you know they they, they don't know anything what to do now because they don't have food How, what are they going to eat the panic and the deaths would be ridiculous in some areas burial fines after this event were 90 to 95 percent lower than before denmark estonia and particularly Ireland, display alarming disruptions in the production of bread and the attending collapse of local societies. We have little evidence to prove this, but if one reads between the lines of the evidence we do have, it can be inferred that there was human starvation and suffering on uh, a mass damn. scale. The same famine, exacerbated by Justinian's war in Italy, supposedly caused mothers in Liguria to eat their babies in order to survive Oh, come on, man, really? Oh, fucking hell. The same famine, exacerbated by Justinian's war in Italy, supposedly caused mothers in Liguria to eat their babies in order to survive, oh as recorded God. by the Bishop of Milan. As if the cold, near-eternal twilight... Oh, God, that, just, that image is just horrifying, man. Mothers eating their babies, that's just effed up. I mean, you know, there was an you know experiment scientists did with the monkeys, I guess, where, you know, uh, female monkeys with their babies were put in some kind of a, you know, heated floor. So they gradually upped the temperature of that thing. So, you know, uh, all the, you know, mother monkeys suddenly realized what's happening and they picked up their kids and held them until the floor became absolutely unbearable. So what the female monkeys did was they put down their, you know, small monkey babies down and stood on them. So they would survive, you know, didn't care about the babies at that point. So, you know, this is the, that experiment kind of tells you, like, humans have, you know, uh, you know, human cares for their children and everything. But there is a limit where, where humans can endure and that kind of thing. So that's just effed up and famine weren't enough to knock over a polity, and sometimes it wasn't, there was a third factor to possibly emerge from the eruption of 536. A half decade after the blast, in 541, 
the first instance of bubonic plague struck the Byzantine trading nexus of Pelusium in Wait a minute, how that came? Six. A half decade after the blast, in 541. Damn, from China to India, it even hit India at the time. Okay. The first instance of bubonic plague struck the Byzantine trading nexus of Pelusium in Egypt, probably originating somewhere in the eastern steppe of northern China. All right, I'm just gonna say, what's with the plagues in China? Even bubonic plague, Black Death, Justinian plague, Black Death, both bubonic plague comes from China. The current thing is from China. Lots of plagues come from China. What's with that, man? Although far from being a universally accepted theory, it is widely and credibly posited that the first onset of what became Justinian's plague in the early 540s was an indirect consequence of the volcanic eruption alluded to by our ancient sources. This chain of causality requires some level of explanation. Just how does a volcanic eruption in Iceland or possibly elsewhere across the world cause civilization crippling plague in the distant Mediterranean? It At first declined. glance, the two disasters seem unconnected. However, of seven severe volcanic eruptions taking place over the last 2000 years, six in 44 BC, AD 626, 934, 1258, 1783, and of course, 536, have resulted in a deadly period of epidemic disease in Europe, the Middle East, or both. Ooh, so that's something, isn't it? So all this uh, terrible smoke and things that basically, you know, blocks the sunlight and cools the places. Maybe that gives the uh, right condition for you know, viruses to thrive. That's why plague happened. So, because of the volcanic erupts and bubonic plague happened, is that it? Because I'm like, what a, you know, screwed up coincidence that volcanic erupts and happen and plague happened. I was thinking that, but apparently volcanic erupts and is the reason why plague, plague might have happened. Because it kind of makes sense. I mean, blocking of the sun could uh, create some kind of, uh, you know, environment where viruses will thrive, I guess. Within one to five years, for this odd trend to be pure chance is, as prominent NASA scientist R.B. Stuthers put it, a very unlikely coincidence. Yeah, it doesn't so what feel is like going a coincidence. On here? The key to unpacking this mystery can be found in the calamitous, volcanism-induced harvest failures which so often rock pre-industrial societies, the direct impacts of which we have already discussed. It is a simple truism that if we humans do not eat properly, our body's defenses do not function properly as a consequence. Crucially for this particular circumstance of 536, entire continents of people were almost certainly suffering from malnutrition, weakening millions of humans to an unprecedented pandemic which then spread like wildfire. Damn. In what comes close to a perfect storm, exposure to the plague flea-bearing rats may also have been drastically increased by the volcanic dust shroud decreasing temperatures actually lessen the development of these insectoid parasites, but said rats were conversely even more likely to be driven into people's homes by the cold. This brought the disease into closer contact with humans and provided a perfect Damn. environment. Houses occupied by starving people weakened by lack All of the conditions were right, weren't it? The cold brought the rats inside, it would spread the disease even more. Damn, I can't even start to imagine the, you know, even though whatever we are going through right now, that doesn't even come close to what these people went through. Because, you know, they had no food. You know, they had no crops, so they had no food. They were starving. They were, you know, basically fighting for anything they could find to eat. And at the time, plague comes, so now you're screwed with that. You're basically immobilized because of the plague hits you. You, your body cannot fight it off because you're malnourished, so your, your immunity is not that high. Oh god, they would have no hope. They always just sit there like, oh, this is it. And that would probably be it. That's just effed up, man. That's really grim. ...of food for the plague to make the short hop from animals to humans. Exacerbated by the Byzantine Empire's cosmopolitan nature, internal supply routes, trade, and the military ventures initiated by Emperor Justinian I, the plague, which came to bear the great ruler's name, infected vast swaths of the Middle East and Southern Europe. Tax-paying citizens died in their millions, potentially bountiful land was left untilled, 
and Rome's remaining empire subsequently convulsed under the pressure. Up to half of the population died. The door of Justinian's Renaissance also slammed violently shut. Sapped to near breaking point, the emperor could not afford to decisively commit his armies to the conflict in Italy. This, accompanied by other military factors, led to a prolonged war of attrition. When that war was eventually concluded in the 550s, the territorial spoils were a desolated, depopulated wasteland, rather than the rejuvenating pot of gold that had previously served as the Roman Empire's beating heart. Although the devastation inflicted on the Byzantine Empire is by far the most famous of the plague's impacts, its Sassanid rival also suffered a less severe blow, in addition to a number of other states on its periphery. Further east still, shorter growing seasons and an inability to feed livestock probably resulted in seismic population movements and political instability within the eastern steppe area. Not only did this disruption result in the usurpation of the Roran steppe's dominance by the Gurk Turks in 551, but it also sent wave upon wave of nomads barreling towards the settled civilizations around them, searching for better lands to occupy. One such confederation, the Avars, arrived north of the Black Sea by 550. In the Far East, tribes were shoved into China and initiated a new round of violent settlement and imperial defense. The mysterious but violent eruption of 536 wasn't allowed to settle before two further explosions followed in AD 540 and 547. Damn. Ice core evidence has shown that these blasts, together with the mass starvation and plagues they helped to spread, played a key role in plunging Europe into a century-long state of economic stagnation. God Only damn. in roughly 640 AD did this grim state of affairs come to an end, shown by a... Maybe you feel like, you know, at the time this would have been so after because it, it happened at that time. But even today, imagine a super volcano explodes and something like this happens. Like if we plunge into some kind of a darkness like that. With already our economy down right now, with all everything's happening, would we recover for a long time? I don't think we would. So even at that, even current times, this would be devastating. Spike of airborne lead, which signaled a resurgence in silver mining. It was the cataclysmic 536 event and its ominous darkness that led medieval historian Michael McCormick to remark how that cursed year often so bypassed in the popular historical narrative as nothing out of the norm, was the beginning of one of the worst periods to be alive, if not the worst year. All we can do is hope and act so that the coronavirus-ridden 2020 was not our 536, a terrible year that served as the herald of all the terrible years to come. Yeah, corona is bad. Coronavirus is really bad, but not as bad as bubonic plague. Come on, man. Bubonic plague was just horrible. The Black Death bubonic plague is just thorough. The population dies. Rats carry over things. It's just effed up. Although a great many scientists support the point of view that the 536 eruption was the cause of the great struggle, others minimize its role. Summarizing their point of view is anti Ajava's statement that not only is there nothing in our evidence to suggest that the year 536 was a watershed moment between antiquity and the Middle Ages, it is also evident that although the cloud occasioned confusion and crop failure at the time of its appearance, its effects did not last long after it dissipated. It does not matter at the end of the day whether AD 536 was indeed just a relatively meaningless but lethal footnote, as Ajava suggests, or whether it was the watershed year in which the final embers of the ancient world were extinguished, providing the ashes for the medieval age to begin. It goes to show that sudden disasters, whether they take the form of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, pandemics or man-made hardships such as political crises or large-scale military conflict, can completely alter the world in which we live in a staggeringly short space of time. Yeah, seriously. The late 520s and early 530s seems to be an unstoppable redemption of the Roman Empire under Justinian. Yeah. But just a scant decade later, 
there. I mean, Justinian's really rebounding, like, okay, it's the glory of Roman Empire is gonna come back, but this shit, uh, you know, this uh, Justinian plague, school things over. Poor Justinian, right? Even the plague is named after him, Justinian plague. Yeah, th that is so true. We, as a civilization, even today, relies on day-to-day -day activities. So if that stops, we are screwed, basically. Even our economy right now depends on day to day. If we if we get stuck for a year or two, we don't have stockpiles that would support the population. So if, you know, a super volcano or any asteroid falls and there is a cloud on top and it screws over things, even today we would be screwed. Of course, humanity would survive. Lots and lots of people go hungry. Lots of people would die. Even the electricity would go out in lots of places. It's just ridiculous. Those lofty dreams were almost completely out of reach, and civilization seemed to be on the ropes. We always have more stories to tell, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be... And this was a great video, I like this channel, this, as a history channel goes this is great. Alright people, that was 536 AD, Washington history, volcano, Justinian plague. Yeah. If you like my Rick's and Food, like and subscribe, check out the Rick's and this link in the description, check out the cast of the different playlists, check out the end cards, and if you want me to react to any videos from this channel or any other channel, comment down, and I'll see you next time.